Hey folks, it's Pat here. Welcome back. Um, I got a chapter 15 question uh, request from a student here, and that's a chi-square test of independence. This is one of the last problems that you'll see in the entire class, and so um, before you get this one, make sure that you do the, the um, chi-square table lookups way back in chapter 7, and uh, the frequency tables, um, I think that's chapter 12, or yeah, it might be 13. And then... Um, if you do the other one um, with chi-square, which is the goodness of fit test, that one, if you do that one before this one, it makes this one a little bit easier to understand. Um, you don't have to, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> you can skip that one and do this one right off the bat. But uh, I'd recommend you do that other one first. But if you do get to this one, all right, um, you have to fill in this contingency table here, and we're doing what's known as a, a test for independence. And we're basically looking to see, you know, do our variables actually act independently of each other? And so we do a hypothesis test on that, and the answer is either yes or no. Okay, <laughs> so, and um, uh, you use the chi-square statistic to be able to do this. These problems get a little tedious just because there's a lot of stuff that you got to do, all right, in order to do it. So the first thing you do is always jump into the table here, and notice it doesn't give us expected frequencies for any of these. We have to calculate them using the contingency table method which is pretty straightforward. So for like this one right here, this is the frequency, and then here is where it wants the statistic, all right? And so you use this formula to get the statistic, all right? But this box, the upper box, that's where you figure out the frequency. And just like before with our contingency tables, since it gives us the totals on the side, you just take this one, multiply it by this one, and then divide it by that one. That will give us our expected frequency right there. And so here we go, 249 times 275, and then divide that by 500, which is our total. There is our expected frequency 136.95 do the same thing here so 275 times 251 275 times 251 and then divide that by our total grand total which is uh, 500 so 138.05 and then same thing here this guy times this guy so 249 times 225 and then divide that by our grand total there we go 112.05. This should all be rinse and repeat from what you saw before when you're doing contingency tables. Times uh, 225 divided by your grand total 500. 11295. Okay, now we have to calculate the statistic for each one of these using this formula right here, which is cool. It gives it to you right in the problem. So it's our expected or observed frequency minus our expected frequency. Square that divided by our expected frequency. So this minus this, square those two, and then divide it by this. And so you do have to do these in parentheses. Otherwise, the square function doesn't work. 6.95, close parentheses. Square that, this button, not this button, <laughs> divided by the expected frequency, 136.95. There we go. 0 0.738. Okay, clear. Next one here, 128, uh, open parenthesis, 128 minus 138.05, close parenthesis, square that, divide it by 138, 138.05, there we go. So 0 0.732, clear. And then this one right here, um, open parenthesis, 102 minus uh, 112.05, close parenthesis, square that, Divided by 112.05 gives us 0 0.901. And then last but not least, you right here, we're going to do 123 minus 112.95, close parenthesis, square that, and divide it by the expected frequency, 112.95. There we go. 0 0.894. Okay, cool. So we've got the table done now. So now down here with the test statistic, all right, we're going to use chi-square and to calculate degrees of freedom on this one. So unlike the goodness of fit test where we only had one row to work with, this one we have multiple rows and multiple columns or categories. And so these are categories. This would be rows right here. And so the, the formula for this one is rows minus 1 times um, categories minus one and so we have two categories so two minus one is one and rows we have two rows <laughs> two minus one is one and one times one so this minus one this minus one equals one in this case and so that's a little confusing I'm glad we got this problem here if you get it with just the four square box on here that's your answer just one degree of freedom and the chi-square distribution as you increase degrees of freedom it does look more like the F distribution but when it has very low degrees of 
of freedom, like in this case, one degree of freedom, it looks like this. <laughs> okay, it looks very, very different. And so don't be confused if you see the explanation. It's like, I've never seen that before. It's okay. It just means you have very low degrees of freedom in this one. So value of the test statistic is pretty straightforward. Uh, we just add all of these up, all of our statistics here. So you can use a sum key for that, or you can just do you know whatever plus whatever that's fine um, I find it's a little easier because some of these have like nine boxes you know just use the sum key and so you just punch these in 0 0.738 comma and this one here 0 0.732 comma and this one here 0 0.901 comma and 0 0.894 enter there's our test statistic right there three dot two six five all right p value for this one really straightforward you just punch it directly in there with how many degrees of freedom you have like that bam so zero dot zero seven uh seven one okay can we conclude there's an association between the variables and so if we reject in this case there is association meaning that we do not have independence and so that one you have to go up here and take a look at our p value or our confidence where is it Oh, never mind. Level of significance, dot one. So since this dot oh seven is lower than that, yes. Okay, so we have a problem here, and there we go. So let's do another one real fast. <laughs> All right, here's one with uh, multiples. So this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes, and so it'll take a little longer to do this one, but you should get the idea. You don't even need to read problems on these. <laughs> okay. So to get our expected frequency for this one here, remember it's this times this divided by that. And so 384 times 208 divided by 500. Oh, it helps if you punch it in the calculator rather than the problem. There we go. 384 times 208 divided by 500 gives us 159.744. And next one, this guy right here. Is going to be 384 divided by or times 115 divided by 500 88 88.32 just remember if you see these and they're really far off okay just double check your math on them i mean if they're like a magnitude order off you, you definitely fat fingered something there so don't do that <laughs> so this one right here uh 116 times 208 divided by 500 gives us uh 48.256 and then last but not least, you right here, 116 times 115 divided by 500 gives us 26.68. That one's pretty far off, so let's just do that one again. 116 times 115 divided by 500. Yep, okay. So never hurts to double check. All right, so now figuring out the test statistic on each one of these. Remember, this guy minus this guy, uh, square that, and then divide it by this one again. So this formula right here. Just remember to use your parentheses. 165 minus 159.744, close parentheses, square that, divided by 159.744. There we go. 0 0.173. Clear. Next one uh, right here. 73 minus 88.32. And the reason why you have to do these on parentheses again is because the square function will return a negative value on this one if you don't do it. Just remember your order of operations. If you get a negative value on this one, it's wrong. <laughs> not 657. Here we go. Uh, next, right down here, open parentheses 43 minus 48.256, close parentheses square, divided by uh, 48.256. There we go, 0 0.572, clear. And last but not least, this one right here. So 42 minus 26.68, close parentheses, square, divided by 26.68. Okay, that one's pretty high. Eight dot. I bet you that one jacked our test right there. 778896. Seven, Eight dot seven nine seven. Oh my gosh! There we go. So, yeah, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing with these. All right, test statistic on this one: chi square. And remember, it is it is 
categories minus one at times uh, rows minus one. So we have one, two, three, four categories. So four categories minus one gives us three. And then two categories on, and two rows on this is two minus one gives us one. Three times one is three. So three degrees of freedom. And that's the thing that most people get jacked up on chi-square, especially when you're dealing with rows and categories. All right. Value of the test statistic. We got to sum all these up. So bear with me while we do the math. Zero to one. Uh, 173 comma 0 0.352 comma 0 0.399 comma uh, 2.657 comma uh, 0 0.572 comma 1.166 comma 1.322 comma and then 8.797 bam there we go 15 and the higher the chi-square value, well, I mean, if you have a lot of rows and a lot of categories, you know, that doesn't really tell you anything. But the higher the value, the more skeptical you should be. So crit value here is uh, .05 level of significance. So we we'll do crit table lookup here. Uh, chi-square .05 with three degrees of freedom gives us 7.814 and 815 and there we go and so this one so because we have more than one degree of freedom it actually does start to look like this all right so our test statistic is 15.438 our crit value is 7.815 so our, our test statistic is way higher than our crit value in this case so yes actually there is something funky going on here and i guarantee you it's this guy right here in fact we better double check that just before we hit enter here although i'm, I'm sure it's correct 42 minus 26.68 squared divided by 8.797 yeah okay we're good <laughs> oh no wait <laughs> oops <laughs> 26.68 there we go yeah okay yeah all right cool it's good so i guess it makes sense that it worked that way but here we go check and there we go. So that's how you do chi-square test of independence. Um, so just remember, get this degrees of freedom part right, and then the rest of the problem will fall into place. So just remember, degrees of freedom is rows uh, is columns minus one times rows minus one. Okay. And so if you get that one right, then the rest of the problem will fall in place for you. All right. So good luck on that one, um, and uh, we'll catch you all in the next video. Take care now. Bye.